Volunteers are a vital part of the work we do at Back Bay Mission. Without the hundreds of volunteers we welcome to the Mississippi Gulf Coast each year, we wouldn't be able to strengthen neighborhoods, seek justice, and transform lives through ministries like our housing rehabilitation program, the Micah Day Center, and our food pantry. I'm Chris Marlin Warfield, the Church Relations Associate here at Back Bay Mission, and this National Volunteer Week, I want to introduce to you a few of the volunteers who take time out of their busy lives to serve the poor and marginalized of the Mississippi Gulf Coast and the people of the United Church of Christ through their work with Back Bay Mission. Today, I'm speaking with Doyle Luckenbaugh. Doyle is a lifelong member of the United Church of Christ and has been involved with Back Bay Mission for almost 40 years. Well, that was an interesting thing. When I first moved here to Ohio from Pennsylvania, I had a marvelous youth group at Suffield uh, United Church of Christ, and we had, oh, 15 to uh, 20 senior high kids, very, very active, and so I wanted to take them on a work camp, and I talked to Art Arby, who uh, had been here and was a talent at the time, uh, and I said, uh, so all right, I said, you know, do you have any good ideas of where to take some kids in a work camp? And he said, oh, he said, got to take them to Back Bay Mission. And I had heard of Back Bay, but I had never been in contact with anyway. And so in 1978, uh, we took, uh, I took my first uh, trip to Back Bay. And Dave and Carl and Stevens were uh, the directors. Bruno Schrader had just come on as a staff person to do the work camping experience, and they were at the old uh, place back on Back Bay, and which is now where the Imperial Palace uh, Casino and Hotel Complex is located. But uh, that was my start, and I fell in love with the place, and I've been going back ever since. As you can imagine, since becoming involved with Back Bay Mission, Doyle has seen a lot of changes on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. Well, the biggest change on the Mississippi Gulf Coast is obviously the, uh, the coming of the casino industry uh, in the early to mid-90s. And that changed things dramatically. Uh, and, uh, of course, Back Bay, as a result of that, uh, uh, was bought out by the Imperial Palace uh, Corporation, and uh, they actually had to move because of eminent domain. Uh, the uh, mayor of Biloxi and the, the administration wanted to enlarge the uh, widen the road, which went right back to, uh, in the front of the mission at that time, and so. They were going to gobble up about half of the administrative offices of the uh, the mission and over cut off the front of the church, which was used for a battered women's shelter. And so that prompted their move over to Vision Street uh, in in the early uh, early 90s. Um, after a long court battle and and so forth, which uh, uh, delayed the process for a couple of years. But anyhow, uh, uh, the, some, the, some of the big changes, well, the thing that always impressed me about Back Bay, and that's part of the changes that took place, is how they were able to uh, redefine themselves and reinvent themselves as an institution based on the needs of the time. Uh, when I first went down there, all we did was... Uh, paint and spray, or spray and paint kind of jobs. Uh, very little construction. This was mostly uh, a, a way for uh, them to get people to come down there and also to expose them to Back Bay. But they were always developing new programs. Uh, the advent of the uh, medical clinic, which was the first medical clinic along the Gulf Coast. And then a dental clinic followed that, and now that is and then Back Bay, once it gets these institutions started, kind of kickstarts them, and then kind of like the the mother bird kicking the babies out of the nest. Uh, okay, you're on your own now. And so and and uh, when they they got to the point where they could could be on their own, and that's what they did. And that also 
preceded that, you know, a food bank, uh, the establishment of the loaves and fishes, the the battered women's shelter, uh, uh, an overture to the the gay and lesbian community, transgender community in that area, uh, which was at that time very much in hiding. uh, And... uh, uh, and so those were just a few of the things that uh, the Back Bay instituted and, and was a part of from early on. And then, of course, when they moved over to, to the other place, uh, then they got involved with home, uh, homeless ministry. Uh, and then Katrina came. And that really changed everything for Back Bay. And uh, they almost had to start from scratch, having lost uh, uh, seven of their eight buildings and facilities, and uh, uh, and also uh, got involved in, in serious construction, primarily rehab at first, and then into new builds, uh, kind of like on Habitat for Humanity. Uh, uh, so it was it was that was a dramatic change, and of course had to pull in people who had the expertise to do that, which they did quite well. As with many of our volunteers, Doyle's first experience of Back Bay Mission was through our Mission Trip program, where volunteers come from throughout the country to work in housing rehabilitation, the Micah Day Center, the Food Pantry, and with our sister organization, Loaves and Fishes. What Doyle has to say about mission trips at Back Bay Mission is a theme that I found throughout the interviews that I did for this year's National Volunteer Week the idea of putting our Christian faith in action, serving others. Well, one of the things that always impressed me right from the get-go was, uh, you know, a lot of times mission trips are set up by institutions and kids go down and they do this and they do that, and I've been involved in some of those from time to time. Uh, but they never really connected what they were doing with the faith in, in a significant way. And, and that when you come down to Back Bay Mission, and I always, you know, we always had an evaluation at the end of the work camping experience. And, and uh, Dave and Carl would come and share with the group. Dave would get on his guitar and we'd sing songs and uh, things like that. And, and, and then, uh, you know, we would sit down and really talk about this from... Uh, the theological perspective, you know, why did we come down here, and, and what are we doing here that is a part of what we believe to be important as part of our Christian faith, and the idea being that, you know, we do these work camp experiences so that we can see uh, putting our faith into action and doing something significant in behalf of the other human beings. I mean, you can go to Matthew 25 and a number of different uh, passages of scripture in terms of uh, ministering to the poor and the needy, and, and they connected all this in, in, uh, in, in excellent ways. And so the kids, this was just not a fun thing to do to go down there. This was a real work experience, and it was an educational experience as far as their own Christian understanding of who they are and, and what it is to be a member of the uh, Christian community and to work. Uh, on behalf of, of others who are in need. And that was one of the things that always impressed me, and that, of course, has been maintained ever since then. Doyle does more than come on mission trips, however. He's also an ambassador for Back Bay Mission, going out to churches and sharing our story. I've had this long relationship with, with Back Bay, uh, and, and, uh, and I always felt so strongly about this organization, and when the opportunity came up uh, to do something uh, significant in terms of uh, uh, trying to to raise funds to to continue to support and maintain the ministries of Back Bay, uh, I just jumped at the chance to do that, and particularly after I was retired, uh, and I've been retired now uh, 13 years, and, and so... Uh, immediately, I, I wanted to be a part of that, and and I just enjoy going around to churches and telling them the story of Back Bay because the story is so so wonderful, and the things that Back Bay does uh, are so significant 
uh, as far as I'm concerned, in really dealing with with uh, not only the uh, the meeting of, of people's needs by providing adequate housing and 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 also uh, helping to rehab houses, particularly since Katrina, but also in the work of the mission, uh, helping to to deal with some of the systemic problems that create uh, hunger and and uh, and poverty in an area like uh, uh, Biloxi, Mississippi, uh, and and so. Uh, They've had a wonderful history of this, and so it's just, uh, you know, a natural for me and a delight for me to be able to to share in that ministry that uh, I've been a part of for such a long time and to do whatever I can to continue to uh, do whatever I can to to help the mission to continue its ministry, which is obviously very significant. Like anyone who's been to Back Bay Mission, Doyle firmly believes in the work that we do. And having come from Ohio, he knows the challenges that congregations can face in getting a group to the Mississippi Gulf Coast. But he also knows that it is an experience that is well worth the effort. You know, why should we drive 1,100 miles here in Ohio, two-day trip down, two-day trip back, and spend all the money uh, just in travel expenses and, and, and so forth to go to Back Bay Mission? And my answer has always been, um, I've been in a lot of different places. There are other worthy uh, programs, uh, other worthy work camps, and, and obviously you want to do a variety of them. But here is one that really stands out as probably the most effective of any that I've ever been associated with. They know how to stretch a dollar better than any institution that I've ever been a part of. And, and including the five churches that I served. And not only that, they do the job of interpreting uh, for young people why it is that they're there. Uh, and, and a lot of the other ones uh, do not do that well as Back Bay does. And, and so, uh, and, and, you know, you can find needs in Appalachia, you can find needs in, in a lot of different places. But the experience of Back Bay uh, has always been a very positive one uh, for me. And, and they, they just know how to do mission work in, in, in such significant ways and have done it in significant ways for so long that they're good at it. And so why not take them to the best? And, and so that they really get the kind of experience that will uh, encourage their participation uh, even further and obviously uh, be a life-changing experience, which is what Back Bay does and does it very well. Back Bay Mission is life-changing, not only for the people we serve on the Mississippi Gulf Coast, but for the hundreds of volunteers who join us every year. If you would like to learn more about volunteer opportunities at Back Bay Mission, please visit our website, thebackbaymission.org. I want to end this piece not with an appeal to go to the website and learn more about volunteering at Back Bay Mission, but with a story. A story that Doyle told me about his experience coming to Back Bay Mission immediately after Hurricane Katrina. A story about the incredible, life-changing power of this place. I'll never forget the story of the lady, I think it was the second year we were down after Katrina. And I don't know if you ever heard of the story about the uh, tablecloth that uh, a group from Connecticut, I think it was, as I recall, uh, and it was a beautiful embroidered piece of material, and they found it in the debris that they were going through when they first came down there shortly after Katrina. And they brought it back and wanted to know if anybody uh, would know where it came from. And we were working on the house right near where that was found, and so we took it and to the lady that we were working with and said, do you know 
cruise this might have been. And and I told them where they were from and, and where they had found it. Oh, she said, I and I forget the woman's name. I, I think that belongs to Ms. somebody, and I forget what her last name is on it. And she was in her 90s, and she survived Katrina. She didn't leave. She had survived Katrina by going into the second floor of a church that was right near this area, and which eventually was destroyed. The winds were blown in, and they all huddled under the benches on the second floor of the sanctuary and survived this. And But she lost everything. Uh, and had no idea that anybody had found this. And she said, I bet this is Mrs. So-and-so's. And so uh, she, while we were eating lunch, she decided she would go over the railroad tracks. The lady had survived and was living in this place and, uh, in a small apartment. And so anyhow, uh, what happened was that uh, it was hers. It was this 90-some-year-old lady's uh, uh, tablecloth or, you know, and, 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 and to hear this woman describe her response to that was just tearing uh, Marion and I up because she says, oh, my goodness, she says, now I could die. It was like, you know, uh, Simeon and the in the temple when he saw Jesus. Um, and it was the one thing that she had from her house and the only thing that was salvageable. And, and it was, and, and the lady came back and had, had talked about it to us. And, 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 well, we just couldn't help but shed a few tears of joy for the fact that this woman had found something and, not of great value, but something that was very meaningful. I think it had been given to her by somebody, you know, in the family years and years ago. And, but it was all she had from that experience of surviving Katrina. So uh, to me, that's, that's what it's all about. And, and yeah, there's God. There's, there's Jesus. <laughs>